Hey guys, how y'all doing? I'm here working on the Big 20. I just pulled all the sheet metal off. Um, I'm looking it all over here. When I got home on Friday, I noticed I got a coolant leak coming from somewhere, so I gotta figure out where that's coming from. I don't think it's the radiator, I think it's the water pump seal. Um, but yeah, I gotta get some tune-up parts for this thing. The guy who previously owned it uh, already went through the fuel system and put some new hoses and a new filter on there. Um, not really the best filter, but it'll work for now. I guess it sat in a barn for a long time and hadn't run for a long time. Um, first thing I definitely got to do is change the oil because you can see... 9 4 1998 is when the oil was changed. This thing sat in a barn for a long time and just a few months ago it started. So, uh, yeah, got to change that out. Um, I pulled over this trailer here. I've had this thing for like six years. Um, got it like real cheap at a yard sale. And put threw some wood on it and used it a lot, but I don't really use it that much anymore. And now I need a trailer to put this thing on. So what I'm gonna do is take all the wood off, um, and I'm gonna shorten up this frame uh, to fit on fit the welder, and maybe narrow it a little bit and beef up the tongue and raise the axle or not raise the axle raise the frame up lift lift it a little bit i should say um so i can fit some bigger tires on it drain out all the coolant just because i don't even know how old it is it could be real old it doesn't look old at all nice and green but all right, guys, so I popped the spark plugs out. Um, here's one of them right here I'm going to take with me to get some new ones. Champion uh, D16 plugs. These things are old school. Really big. It's like 7 eighths hex on there. Um, but they just all have normal wear. Um, just, you know, normal wear. They don't look all oily and stuff so that's good because I thought this thing was burning oil um, but by the looks of the plugs it sure doesn't look like it is um, and I pulled off the the cap the cap is definitely worn out the cap and rotor um, so I gotta get some new ones for that and uh, the points are pretty well shot there's a label on that sheet metal that gives you all the specs Definitely need to get a filter for this thing. I couldn't find an oil filter locally either. It's an oddball filter. Baldwin B20. Or not B20. B50. Um, and even all the crossover um, like to different um, brands and stuff. They're all oddball uh, sizes as well for the other brands. Um so I got to get that online. All right, guys, it's the next day, Sunday, rainy day. Um, I got the spark plugs in and got the points uh, gapped and everything put back together. I did fire it up. Uh, it still doesn't want to start right away, um, but I don't think that's ignition related. I think that's a, a fuel starvation problem because when I turn the uh, the fuel on, it slowly fills up the uh, fuel filter and the, the float bowl and stuff. And then uh, when it's running, it seems to be like the fuel you can see in the fuel filter. It kind of runs out of fuel and uh, stutters a little bit and then uh, fills back up. So uh, there might be some blockage up in here somewhere. I have to look into that. And I'll probably take the carburetor off and clean it. Um, but right now I want to weld with this thing. It runs good enough that I can weld with it. So I'm going to try it out. 
All right, guys, I just fire, fired this up. Um, I think it's idling way too high. It's supposed to idle at 1,200 RPM and then kick up to 1,800 when you weld. But it sounds a lot higher than that. So I got my uh, multimeter hooked up here. I'm going to fire it up and see, uh, see what it's idling at. Yeah, it's idling way too high. There we go, I can live with that. Got the trailer all torn apart. It's actually turned out to be a beautiful day. It's like 55 degrees. But anyway, um, yeah, you just saw I got this idling at the proper RPM. Now I'm going to unload this table and roll it outside so I can finish welding it. Or at least do some of it today because then after that... Before the day ends, I want to get this taped off. You can see I did the yellow, or the, yeah, yellow. Um, but I got that painted. Uh, and I'm going to tape this off so I can do the white to match that. Um, now this side, that's been out in the sun, kind of faded out nice. So that's what this will look like when it's been outside in the sun. Alright guys, it's the next weekend. I printed out the owner's manual for the uh, Big 20. That's a pretty helpful uh, manual. It's got all kinds of information. Um, even some engine stuff. Tune up kind of things. Some pictures here. And I got a new oil filter. I had to order this because nowhere locally had this filter. Alright guys, here's all the snow. Apparently we got like 26 inches or something like that. But you can see there's a lot of snow. So, the company I work for, they have a contract. Um to keep Kodak plowed out. I'm sure you've heard of Kodak in Rochester, New York. So that's what I was doing yesterday, up there for 12 hours plowing this stuff. Alright guys, there's the new filter. It's looking good. I don't know if I told you guys, but um, last weekend when I messed with this, I did weld with it and it welded good, but the only problem was the automatic idle control wasn't working, so I just had to turn the uh, idle speed up to 1800 manually um, so the automatic idle is not working at all um, for those of you who don't know how that works there's a switch on here right there and when it's off when you when the switch is off this thing runs at weld speed 1800 rpm continuously when the switch is on it idles down at 1200 and when you weld or use the uh, AC uh, outlets there. Um, it's supposed to kick up to 1800 automatically. There's a little solenoid um, on the throttle linkage. But that's not working at all, so I, I gotta mess with that. I already did mess with it a little bit. Um, I'm pretty sure it's that the solenoid right over here. That blue solenoid right there. Pretty sure it's that because I took it off and I hooked it up to a battery. It is a 12 volt solenoid. So I hooked it up to a 12 volt battery and it didn't do anything at all. So I'm pretty sure it's that. But before I buy one of those, which are unreasonably expensive, um, I'm going to check my rheostat. I just clean the connections on the rheostat right there, that round thing. And, um, 
they were really dirty. So I cleaned those and I'm going to make sure I'm getting power at those wire, those solenoid wires. Make sure I'm getting power when I plug something in here before I go out and spend the money on one of those solenoids. Because I really, really want the um, automatic idle to work because that's really nice. All right, guys. As you can see, I'm dropping the coolant. Now, why am I doing that? I just put it in. Well, I was running this thing, and I noticed that there was quite a bit of um, white sludge coming out of the, the breather tube, which is not a good sign. Um, I, I just pulled the carb off to get to the valve valves there and pulled the valve cover off. The valves are okay. So... I'm pretty sure I got a blown head gasket on this, which would explain why we got that white sludge and why um, it seems to be overheating a little bit, even though it's got plenty of coolant. So, simple tune-up is now turning into a uh, head gasket replacement, but uh, that's no big deal. It's an easy easy thing to do on these flathead motors so I'm gonna get that swapped out hopefully next weekend and this weekend um, maybe I'll take the carburetor apart this is a Zenith carburetor so I can't find any of this stuff locally so I gotta order it all and it should all be in by next weekend um, but I'll keep you guys updated as I tear the, into this. Well, guys, here's the head. I pulled it off. It looks good. I just got done cleaning it up. I got the uh, combustion chambers cleaned out. So I'm going to throw some quick paint on this. Um, the head gasket actually looks pretty good, too. I think what was going on, my theory here, is uh, these uh, the head bolts, most of them are wet. Uh, there, most of them go into a water jacket. So I'm thinking um, there was some evidence that uh, there was some leakage at one of these head bolts into the uh, cylinder. So I think that's what's going on. Like the head gasket itself was fine, but we had some leakage. So uh, I'm going to get a new head gasket, of course, and. I'm going to get some kind of, I'm going to do some research and get some kind of uh, sealant for these head bolts uh, to try to prevent this from happening again. Um, but yeah, the pistons look good and everything. I'm going to uh, turn the thing over a few times and I'm going to check the valves. All right, guys, it is the next weekend. I got all my parts in for the big 20. Um, show you that. Got a lot of stuff in here, so it's a little tight to work in, but that's okay. So there is my head gasket. Felpro. Part number 7602S-1. If anybody else out there is doing a head gasket on a Continental Y112. It's pretty common uh, forklift engine too. Clark used them for many years. So if you search up Continental Y112, usually the first uh, stuff that come up in the search is like um, forklift related uh, articles. But there's a head gasket. Um, I got some of that uh, copper spray sealant head gasket sealer stuff. I'm going to definitely use that. It's actually recommended on these engines um, to definitely use a spray on adhesive stuff. So I got some of that and that should help a lot. Um, I heard good things about that copper spray gasket stuff. Um, never actually used it, but I had good uh, feedback on it. So, uh, See how it works. And I also got a 12 volt pull style solenoid here. It's not exactly the same as the one that originally was on it. 
a little bit different size, but it does the same thing. It has the same uh, um, travel. They both have a one inch travel, I believe. Um, so that should work, but yeah, the, the part, this, this thing is pretty much obsolete. You can't find it anywhere. So you, I'm just going to make this one work. Um, that's for the automatic idle. So that's that. And I got, I don't have to show you, but in this bag, I got, uh, some gaskets for the carburetor and I got some, uh, a new set of points. So that's that. Um, I got the head, or not the head, the block all cleaned up and the cylinders and everything. Uh, everything looks good. I don't see any cracks or anything. I got the valve seats all cleaned up. And everything looks good. I don't see any burnt valves or any cracks or anything. So, uh, I gotta do one more thing, and that is uh, clean out these um, the head bolt holes here. Um, get those cleaned out. Um, I bought some uh, Teflon head bolt sealer too. That's a that's a must. Here's the carburetor. I didn't show you guys it. It's a Zenith uh, carb. I basically just got all the gaskets. I didn't get the full kit because I figure it's in pretty good. Sh uh, it's probably in pretty good shape. Um, I'm just assuming that. Just uh, it run ran pretty good the way it is. I just want to freshen it up, put new gaskets in it and stuff, and clean up the um, thoroughly clean it out and everything. Um, I don't think it needs a full kit, so I don't think the the carb or the float is uh sticking or anything or has any pinholes because it runs fine doesn't flood out or anything so so that's that and over here i got my um head right there got her painted up looks pretty sharp it's gonna stick out like a sore thumb on that old engine there the combustion chambers, I got them all cleaned out. Um, they had a little bit of, uh, you know, just your typical uh, carbon buildup. Nothing nothing major. I've seen a lot worse. Um, and everything's looking good. I did run a straight edge across it, and it appears to be pretty straight. I was, I was worried it was going to be warped, because that's another thing I heard about the Y112s. Um, Warping was an issue, but I, I think this uh, this engine has pretty low hours on it by the looks of everything. Um, so yeah, it's, it's looking pretty good. I think there's a lot of life left in this. Anyway, guys, until next time, I'm gonna make this the end of the video here. I think it's getting long enough. I'll see ya. Have a good one.